Let's look at how cements can be classified. These sometimes are used in different applications. I, I already told you the example of using cement in a column in a high rise building versus using the same cement in a dam. You need different characteristics for the applications. Because of that, you sometimes have to define cement of different types which can be employed for specific applications. So, cement can be classified based on differences in the chemical composition, differences in physical properties. For example, some cements are much finer than the others, okay. Differences in terms of sometimes putting extra additives into the cement powder or sometimes you may have very special purpose cements which are not used for general purpose construction. So, let me give you examples of different types of cements here. I am going with this universally applied classification called ASTM or American Society for Testing and Materials. Okay, American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM basically brings out standards on all kinds of materials and processes and test methods and so on. So, the ASTM classification for cement is included in ASTM C150, okay. According to this, cement is classified as general purpose, type 1 cement, moderately sulphate resistant and moderate heat of hydration type 2 cement, high early strength cement which is type 3 cement, low heat of hydration cement that is type 4 cement and sulphate resistant cement that is type 5 cement. And sometimes you add what is called an air entraining agent to type 1 and type 2 cements to call it type 1A and type 2A. I am not going to confuse you with all these cements, but let me just get, get to the basic understanding of what could be the differential components that are present in these cements. So, of course, type 1 is a general purpose cement, that is cement that is available for use everywhere, okay. You can take this sort of a formulation and make adjustments to get the other type of cements. So, let us take two examples, let us take high early strength, okay. So, what are the ways in which you can increase the early strength of the cement? We already talked about two possible ways. One is increasing the C3S content, increase C3S content, right? As I told you, C3S is responsible for early strength. The more the C3S, the greater will be the early strength, okay? So, wh where do you need high early strength cement? Supposing you want to very quickly build something, you can use high early strength cement. Supposing you want to build in a cold weather, where because of the external temperature, you may start freezing the water in the concrete, you want high early strength cement to gain strength much faster, so that it does not start freezing, okay. So, in such applications, you want high early strength cement. So, increasing C3S will lead to high early strength. You could also increase the fineness of the cement, increase the fineness, so grind it much finer that will make it more reactive and increase the rate of strength gain. So, increase C3S, increase fineness to get high early strength cement. What about low heat of hydration cement? We talked about the different cementitious compounds, right? And the one which had low heat of hydration was C2S, okay? So, C2S has low heat of hydration. So, in a low heat of hydration cement, you will have more C2S as compared to general purpose cement, okay? Just so, this is how you actually look at producing different characteristics from the same set of compounds, right? So, this is overall the typical composition that is given by ASTM for the five different types of cement. So, as I said, I was comparing high early strength cement type 3 with the general purpose cement type 1. So, instead of 45 to 55 C3S, you have 50 to 65 in type 3, so you have more C3S. You may also want to increase your C3A, okay, because that is also responsible for early strengthening, okay. What about type 4? You see that your C2S was 20 to 30 percent in type 1, but in type 4, that is heat, low heat cement, you have 40 to 50 percent C2S, okay. And you are reducing the components that produce high heat like C3S or C3A. Okay. So, all these characteristics you need to keep in mind while thinking about how alternative or different cements are designed. So, in relation to type 1 cement, that is general purpose cement, type 2 will have marginally lower C3S and C3A. 
type 3 will have marginally higher C3S and as I said a higher fineness. Okay? Type 4 will have a lower C3S and also lower C3A content and generally much higher C2S content. Type 5 will have a lower C3A content. That is what you see in this uh, table here in terms of the quantities of the compounds presented in different types of cements. This is just some examples of how these cements are affecting concrete properties from a textbook by Mehta and Montero. So you see here what is plotted on the y-axis is the heat of hydration. That means how much heat is getting evolved in the calories per gram okay, versus age. So the type 1 cement or general purpose cement is here. So it evolves quite rapidly in the beginning and then it slows down. The heat of uh, rate of heat evolution slows down later okay, and stabilizes. Type 3 cement that is the high early strength cement is liberating a lot of heat in the beginning and then it slows down. Okay? That means it is reacting much faster. Type 2 cement which is lower heat of hydration as compared to type 1 starts off slowly and then continues to go as long as hydration happens. So please remember as long as cement is reacting with water, heat will continue to get liberated. But since bulk of the cement is already reacted at later ages, the rate of heat evolution will come down. Okay? With respect to strength development, if this is type 1 cement, it starts rapidly in the beginning but then it slows down towards the end. If you compare type 3 cement which is high early strength cement, in the initial stages you have much more rapid strength development but then in the long term you may actually end up lower than type 1 cement. If you look at type 2 or type 4 cement which are low heat, they will start off very low but they will continue to gain strength and may at some stage even overtake type 1 cement. So in other words, if you allow the cement to continuously react with water, in the long term it may end up producing a structure that is stronger than your general purpose cement with type 1. Okay? But please remember all this is dependent on a continuous supply of water to the cement. If water stops and cement does not have access to water, its reaction also will stop. Okay? So whatever water is inside the concrete, as long as it is available for reaction, the reaction will continue and the cement will continue to hydrate. But if there is no water, reaction will stop. Now in some cases, we blend certain components to enhance the properties of the cement or sometimes even just to lower the cost. Okay? So there are different types of blended cements that are permiss uh, permissible as per the ASTM standards. One is called Portland Blast Furnace Slag Cement which is called type 1S and the slag is nearly 25 to 70 percent by mass in this cement. Now what is this blast furnace slag? You have learned about the blast furnace process in the manufacture of steel. In your school, you may have had some lessons in which you say that uh, the iron ore, right, it is put in this blast furnace along with limestone and carbon or coke. Limestone is used as a flux. It lowers the temperature at which your reduction of the iron ore happens to form iron. Okay? Now what happens with is this limestone basically has calcium oxide in it. And your iron ore will have a lot of impurities in the form of silica, alumina and some additional iron oxide that is present. So what will happen is this slag which comes out as an impurity from the blast furnace process ends up having a nice composition of calcium oxide, silicon dioxide and aluminum oxide and sometimes even iron oxide. Right? So it is almost similar to cement, the slag that comes out, okay? the molten slag that floats on top of the pig iron in the blast furnace process can be used as a cementing material. So it is rapidly cooled or quenched, solidified, broken into a powder and then used as a cement replacement. So that is what is used in a Portland blast furnace slag cement which is called type 1S cement and slag content is typically 25 to 70 percent by mass. You can also have what is called a Portland porcelain cement in which case we use a smaller replacement of 15 to 40 percent of the cement by a porcelain. A porcelain is nothing but reactive silica, reactive silica. So this combines 
with the calcium hydroxide that forms from the reaction of cement hydration to produce more CSH. Okay, that's what the pozzolan does. It basically combines with the calcium oxide to produce more CSH. And this reaction is of, of obviously called the pozzolanic reaction. And as I said, as you form more and more solid products, it will start filling up porosity. So the pores will get more refined. As a result, your concrete will be more durable. So when you replace your Portland cement with blended cement, you end up with more durable concrete. Please remember that. Okay, you increase the durability when you change from OPC to other forms of cement. Again, just to reiterate, the Pozzolanic reaction is the reaction between calcium hydroxide that forms from cement hydration and reactive silica that you get from the Pozzolanic material to produce additional calcium silicate hydrate. So what you're doing is you're consuming this lime, okay, you're refining your porosity, Okay, and you are also refining the interfaces. So if you consider aggregates, right, the cement paste around the aggregate is getting a lot more denser in the case of a pozzolanic reaction. Okay. This reaction is slow. So basically it leads to an overall reduction in the heat of hydration. So when cement is replaced by fly ash, or slag, the heat of hydration reduces. So what happens is, instead of using a low heat cement for certain applications like a dam for instance, I can still use a general purpose cement, type 1 cement, but replace partly with fly ash or slag. That will bring down the extent of heat. This reaction is much slower than the reaction of cement hydration. Okay. But one way in which it gets accelerated is by the presence of alkalis and gypsum. Interestingly, both alkalis and gypsum are contributed from cement. We saw earlier in the structure of cement, there are oxides like alkali oxides, sodium and potassium oxide. And of course, we add gypsum in the final stages of cement manufacture. So all these components are still present to accelerate the reaction of the pozzolanic material. But nevertheless, the reaction of the pozzolan is much slower as compared to cement, which leads to a much better durability in the long term, at the same time reduces the heat of hydration in the early stages. Again, this is just showing you the heat of hydration in calories per gram with respect to the pozzolan content in the cement. At 7 days, it is coming down a little bit. At 90 days, the extent of reduction of heat of hydration is significant. Okay. Now, in certain cases where you have problems of undue expansions of the concrete, the use of pozzolanic materials brings down the expansion and reduces the tendency for cracking. Okay. So, overall, today, increasingly, we have to prepare concrete with cementitious additives, which are pozzolanic in nature, to ensure that we produce concrete of a much better long-term durability. Now, if you look at the Indian standard classifications, which are covered essentially in this IS-269 for ordinary Portland cement. So if you look at uh, ordinary Portland cement in India, we define it into three grades, 33, 43 and 53 grade. And the grade of the cement corresponds to the strength achieved by the cement mortar at 28 days. Strength achieved by cement mortar at 28 days. So I said earlier, the uh, compressive strength of cement is determined on the mortar. So the grade of 33, 43 and 53 basically are referring to the strength attained by the cement paste, or oh, sorry, uh, strength attained by the cement mortar, which is uh, as per a certain formulation. Okay, that uh, I should also tell you that the tests uh, Tests for cement are covered in IS4031 and IS4032. Okay, one is related to physical properties involving specific gravity, fineness, compressive strength, etc. The other is chemical properties, how to determine the oxide compositions and so on. Okay? So 33, 43, and 53 grades refer to the strength in megapascal. The grade implies the strength in megapascal 
achieved by the cement mortar at 28 days. Now, this 28 is quite funny because you will see this coming later in concrete design also. We always design for what is the 28 day strength. Okay. Now, 28 days is taken as the definition of the characteristic time for the strength of the concrete. Okay. When you design concrete of a particular strength for a construction project, what you will also do is prepare some cubes and measure the strength at 28 days on those cubes to ascertain whether the concrete in the structure has met the demands of what is required. So, this 28 days is a very sacred number. Okay. So, couple of questions for you to understand why 28 days, why we consider 28 days strength. It is because most of the cement that is likely to hydrate would complete its hydration within 28 days for a general purpose cement when you are dealing with type 1 cement or a general purpose cement. Okay? If you think about low heat cement, 28 days is probably not enough to think about. You may have to think about much longer time period. So, increase the time over which the reaction actually happens with water. Okay? So, very often in construction sites, we are interested in finding out the 28 day strength. When we design concrete also in the laboratory, we talk about 28 day strength. Very often, we also look at early age strengths at 7 days and 3 days, depending upon what our requirements are. Okay? But here, if you look at the grades of cement, they would have specified strengths at 3 days, 7 days and 28 days. The cement which is tested as per that standard has to meet strength requirements at 3 days, 7 days and 28 days. Okay? Now, of course, similar to ASTM standards, IS also describes low heat cement, rapid hardening or high early strength cement. It also calls Portland porcelain cement or PPC or Portland slag cement which is otherwise known as PSC. Okay? In India, very often when you go to the market, you will talk about OPC, PPC and PSC. OPC itself, mostly what you will get in the market will be 43 grade or 53 grade. These days, you do not get the lower grade cement in the market. You only get 43 or 53 grade cement in the market. There are no grades defined for PPC and PSC. Okay? You will only get one type of PPC or PSC. Of course, you get many different brands of cement. In India, there is no dearth of brands. There are so many different cement manufacturers. You get all kinds of brands of cement. So, how do you make sure the cement is good for construction? Again, take the cement, do the analysis, determine the chemical composition, do the physical properties, do those basic tests that I talked about previously and ensure that everything is matching the requirements given in these standards. Okay? Whatever cement you buy in the market, as long as it meets these standards, it is fit to be used in concrete. Now, there are certain cements which are not belonging to the same category that we just talked about from the basic composition of the four different compounds that you have. These are cements which are produced in a slightly different manner. So, one such cement is called expansive cement. Now, one of the common problems with concrete is its tendency to shrink. Right? We mix cement with water some water goes into the reaction with cement, there is some water which is free and slowly this free water will start drying out of the concrete. In other words, because of the removal of water from the concrete, the structure of the cement will change and there will be a slow reduction in the volume or contraction of the volume which we otherwise call as shrinkage of the concrete. Okay? We call that as shrinkage. Now, if this shrinkage happens freely, there is no stress generated in the concrete. However, if this shrinkage is prevented from ha happening, then it starts formation of cracks in the concrete. Okay? So, we want to avoid excessive shrinkage so that concrete does not crack. So, in such cases, we use these special cements called expansive cements. What would happen is, in normal case, a typical cement paste would shrink with respect to time. right? Whereas an expansive paste will first expand when it is hydrating and then it will slowly shrink just like normal cement paste. But what is happening as a result? Your net shrinkage is being brought down significantly. The net shrinkage is being 
reduced significantly. That means the stresses that will be caused because of shrinkage will be reduced in an expansive cement paste. Okay? For several applications, we use expansive cement to produce a net zero shrinkage or sometimes even a net expansion in the concrete sometimes. Okay? These are produced by adding special compounds to the cement. Okay? They are not regular cement, but they are produced specially. Not all cement plants will produce all types of cements or all special purpose cements. Okay? Only some types of uh, cement plants will actually produce all these special cements. There is also a cement called calcium aluminate cement where the raw materials are not calcium carbonate, uh, limestone and clay, but limestone and bauxite that is aluminum oxide. Okay? So, these produce compounds that are rich in calcium oxide and aluminum oxide or calcium aluminate. These are also called high alumina cement. Okay? Calcium aluminate cements are also called high alumina cement. Now, this type of cement became very popular after the end of the Second World War, especially in Germany, where they wanted to rebuild their infrastructure, which had been completely bombarded and destroyed because of the war. Right? So, they started building rapidly because this cement gained strength very rapidly. As you can see from this picture of strength versus age, the high alumina cement gains strength much more rapidly as compared to rapid hardening cement or OPC. Right? So, they started developing a lot of structures with high alumina cement which gained strength rapidly. Problem was, as this concrete made with the cement was exposed to the external environment with moderately high temperatures and humidity, what happened was the strength basically dropped over time. Okay, this happens because of an internal chemical compound composition which is changing as it is subjected to a continuous exposure to temperature and humidity. And because of that, you have a problem of using the cement for normal construction. Many of these structures that were built after the war had to be removed or destroyed because the concrete started reducing in strength. And as a result, you had a lot of failures in these structures. Okay? So, that happens primarily because of gradual conversion of the products of hydration. I am not going deep into the chemistry here. The idea is to simply tell you that high alumina cement is not good for general purpose construction. However, it is a very good concrete to use at very high temperatures, especially inside kilns for instance. Right? Inside a kiln where the temperature is 1000 degrees and more, the high alumina cement forms a nice ceramic bond and because of which you will actually get an excellent material that is resistant to heat. There are other special cements also which are used for very specific purposes like rapid hardening cement. Okay? Rapid hardening cement is generally consisting of some amount of plaster of Paris, which is calcium sulphate hemihydrate CaSO4 half H2O or sometimes it may have Portland cement plus calcium aluminate cement. So, that as soon as you mix with water within a small period of time, let us say as low as 10 minutes, you get a rapid stiffening. So, for example, you want to plug a hole in a water tank for instance, you could use something like a rapid setting cement. It is not rapid hardening cement. We talked earlier about rapid hardening cement or high early strength cement. Those cements are formulated to develop strength at an early age, but they are not necessarily rapid setting. They set normally, but they can get strength at an early age. Here we are talking about rapid setting. Okay? Then you have white cement. Very often you see this ad on your televisions, right? that you use white cement to make these putties. Right? White cement basically is used for decorative purposes or for lining between the tiles. Right? When you joint the tiles, you will often see it is filled up with white cement paste because there a grey will not be appearing very nice. So, white cement is used for very specific purposes. So, as the colour is white, you can imagine that it has got very little iron content, almost zero iron content is available, okay? low iron content. And the advantage with the white cement is you can pigment it to colour in any, uh, you can pigment it to make it any colour. Okay? Then there are other special cements like oil well cements which are used for oil well drilling applications. So, when you drill very long bores into the rock to extract oil, to prevent the soil from collapsing, you need to line up the walls of the bore that you have drug, uh, dug with cement. And the cement should be such that it can flow very long distances after mixing, but at the same time when it comes to rest, it should be forming that 
layer on the soil surface so that the soil does not cave in. So it's a very uniquely formulated cement and it needs to have a combination of different types of additives to ensure that it is flowable for a long time but when it comes to rest it sets and hardens almost immediately. So again this is something that needs to be formulated very carefully. Sometimes you may also in some markets have special purpose cements for masonry applications okay where we do not want to use lime, we do not want to use normal cement because it produces very high heats of hydration and can cause cracking of your uh, plaster for instance. You can use what is called masonry cement and this is a mixture of cement, gypsum and limestone or sometimes other air, uh, fillers and also some air and training agents which causes a very nice consistency and ease of application as opposed to normal cement. Okay, Of course, it does not have as good a strength as your normal masonry cement, uh, as your normal Portland cement, but at the same time, it is much better suited for applications for masonry purposes. Another special cement is called super sulfurated cement, which is based on blasphemous slag. You have a large quantity of blasphemous slag and do not have much cement clinker in the composition. And it is used for good resistance to chemical attack, which are otherwise quite dangerous for normal Portland cement like sulfate attack. Super sulfurated cements are good there. Problem is, in the long term, you have a slow reduction in strength. And that is why, again, super sulfurated cements are not typically used for general purpose construction. In fact, they are not really manufactured also to a large extent around the world. I was talking previously about tests on cement. I am just showing you the same here. The normal consistency and the setting time are done with the Vicat apparatus, which is shown here. The Vicat apparatus is shown on the right side here of the, of the picture. So you have a mold into which you mix your cement paste and put it inside. Then you have a plunger, okay, a plunger of 1 centimeter, which is made to rest on the top of the cement paste and then dropped. And this plunger basically plunges into the cement paste. Okay. And when it is at a certain distance from the bottom, if it stops, it is called normal consistency. That 1 centimeter plunger is used for determining the normal consistency. The normal consistency is nothing but the water content at the point at which the plunger just comes to a rest about 5, cent 5 millimeters above the bottom of this mold here. Okay? Now the initial setting, for the initial setting we use a 1 millimeter needle. We use a, penetra a penetrating needle which is 1 millimeter in diameter. For consistency we use a plunger of 1 centimeter, for setting time we use 1 millimeter okay? and this 1 millimeter needle basically penetrates the cement paste up to a distance of 5 to 7 millimeters from the bottom that is called initial set and the point at which it does not penetrate the top at all that is called final set. Okay? The soundness is measured typically with the help of this Le Chatelier's mold. So the freshly mixed cement paste is packed into this mold and you can put it in a special chamber where it is subjected to temperature and pressure to accelerate the reaction. At the end of one day, you see how much expansion or how much opening of this mold has actually happened. Okay? So that is called soundness. Fineness is measured in terms of air permeability test. So this is the air permeability instrument, which is also called the Blaine apparatus. So here what we do is we pack the cement, okay? cement is packed into a bed here and what we are simply trying to do is by application of pressure, we are trying to make air pass through the cement, make air pass through cement bed. So if the cement is very fine, what will happen is the gaps between it will be small. So air, the velocity of air passing through the cement bed will be much lower, uh, will be uh, much lower, yeah, it will be passing very slowly. If the cement is coarse, that means not fine, it will have large gaps in it. So the air will pass much faster. So based upon the speed of flow of air, which is determined with this U-tube or a manometer, right? you can then determine the relative fineness. So for that you need to have the fineness of a standard material like a standard cement known and this standard cement is available from 
the National Cement Based Materials, uh, the Center for National Cement Based Materials. Okay. Then you have the test for specific gravity. Sometimes fineness is also exhibited in terms of the amount of material that passes through a 90 micron sieve. So just take a sieve of 90 microns, put your cement through and amount of material that is passing 90 micron sieve or retained on 90 micron sieve can be also used as a measure of the fineness. The specific gravity can be determined by a pycnometer method by using what is called this Le Chatelier flask. Okay. This is a very simple test. All you are doing is putting a powder here and filling it up with a liquid like oil or kerosene up to a certain point and then you do the same test without the powder and fill it up and then by measurement of masses uh, you can then determine or measurement of the uh, mass of the material added you can then determine the specific gravity. Then you have compressive strength as I said on mortar. So these tests are covered in IS4032 whereas the chemical comp composition tests for cement are covered in IS4031. Now it is very important that while this course is going on all of you get access to the different Indian standards whatever I have been mentioning in my lectures. We talked about brick and stone standard, concrete block standards then we are talking primarily about the types of cement standards for that and then testing of cement. All these standards it will be good if you go through these uh, and then get yourself familiar with the kind of approaches that are there in these standard test methods. Okay, so we will stop with this for today.